Okay, I'm, I will start. Hi, and welcome to my uh, presentation. So today we'll talk uh, 40 minutes or, uh, about tracing in microservices uh, and integration in the ZXF and Spring Boot. My presentation will contain uh, some parts. Um, so the first, just to define tracing goal, let's see why tracing is important at all especially in the distributed system microservices landscape. Then make uh, some definitions, um, what is the spans, what is the traces. Uh, then we'll look a bit in the uh, open Zipkin uh, tracing solution, how it, uh, what is the architecture of it. And we'll uh, show two kind of integration, how ZXF, Apache ZXF is integrated uh, to Zipkin and uh, another example will be a Spring Boot, so how Spring Boot using Slow is also integrated with Objective. And I also make it two short demos for every solution. Uh, and uh, on the last on the last part, um, I will provide uh, uh, explain a bit the real life um, solution for tracing that we use for one of the e-commerce customer today, and also explain how it works. This is a plan. Uh, you can ask question every time, so you can also interrupt me, it's not a problem uh, during the presentation, or you can keep your question in the uh, chat. I will check it on the, in the end uh, or during the presentation. So let's let's go. Um, shortly about me, um, I'm working as a software architect and talent team. So talent produced some products based on the open source uh, projects, also some Apache projects, therefore I also uh, in Apache community and PMC in Apache ZXF is a kind of web service and REST communication framework. Make also some contributions in the Apache Syncope uh, areas and Apache Kavash. Uh, the first question, why tracing is important at all? So normally, if you have a single application that run in the, in the, in the host, uh, basically we have all information in log and the question why we need the tracing. As a problem is in the, in the uh, modern applications, normally you deploy not a single part. It's, uh, it contains uh, some different applications, the system that's deployed on different hosts. Especially if you use uh, microservices architectural style, you'll probably end up with a number of applications deployed in the different instance, especially if you use some uh, kind of orchestration solution like uh, Kubernetes or deploy in the cloud. So application will have some instances and some different kind of, of uh, application. And by the call, if the client make a call, uh, this request goes through the, uh, goes through the different uh, microservices. And the problem here is it's sometimes very difficult to say if you have a problem, if you have an error in the end, it's a quite difficult to say what exactly was the reason of this error. So you don't see, uh, you, of course, every application writes their own log file on, in the system, but it's quite uh, difficult to understand what part of the system is uh, uh, has a failure. Therefore, uh, it is necessary to uh, track the whole round trip of the request. So from the beginning, from the client, and how it goes through the different uh, part of your system and exactly see what happens. So what, what, what is uh, my trip of my request? Uh, this is the first issue. Also, sometimes um, it's even more uh, difficult to, 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 to understand why, why, why system is slows down. Uh, so why system has an uh, outage. Uh, it's to just don't re receive uh, some timeout on the client side, but have no idea which part of the system uh, uh, has a problem. Tracing also helps in such situations. So with tracing, you see uh, how your request goes and which time it's spent in every uh, microservice. This is basically the goals of the tracing. So if you look at uh, tracing requirements and forces, um, 
The first is, of course, correlate distributed log entities. So you have this log entities, you have some information, but it's necessary to correlate it somehow uh, across uh, uh, numerous logs, numerous hosts, numerous systems. Um, also, important to discover based on some client information, you have some, some information from the client, for example, session ID or your information request and based on this information it would be nice if you find in log the whole chain of the requests with some additional information. Um, also it makes a lot of sense to add some metrics like a time, execution time, it helps to analyze for example slowdowns of the system or outages and also some like a, and some information like execution operation, which operation is uh, running for example as a get or post. Um, also, very important, last, last but not least, uh, the solution should produce uh, minimal overhead uh, at the runtime. Uh, so it's uh, not nice if your system uh, has a slowdown because of tracing. Uh, so this should not happen. And uh, even worse, if your system has a failure only because of tracing. Therefore, how tracing solution normally looks like uh, a sign uh, for each request when you could identify. So request should be identified somehow. So the yeah, tracing terminology is, uh, the name is trace ID and it keeps it's constant for the whole round trip. So it's really identify how you uh, find your round trip of the message. Then this request should be propagated to all system that involve it in the communication and handling of the request. So uh, it doesn't matter as asynchronous communication or Synchronous, we are using HTTP. Somehow you should propagate this request ID and have it log it in the whole part of the system. Um, then make it a lot, lot of sense to include this information, this request ID in all log messages, perhaps with also some additional information. Then, um, our, yeah, this also you record some additional information like uh, timing, cooperation stuff. Perhaps some logs, some exceptions also in your about your request, about your processing of the request, and aggregate log files and provide Elasticsearch solution as normal way to for distributed logs. So you in single place you can find the whole round tree of the message and see how it looks, how much time is spent with the different part of the system. Um, also push trace information into the uh, additionally, of course, you can push this information into central server. Uh, normally, it happens asynchronously to keep uh, uh, to make an influence on the system performance uh, as less as possible. So, so you can write it in the log. You can directly report it to the trace server, like OpenZipkin, using some protocols. Uh, terminology of the tracing. So. Uh, the main, uh, the most important um, term in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tracing is the trace itself, identified by trace ID, and trace is basically the whole round tip of the message. So in the picture, you see a client that uh, sends some HTTP request to the web framework or on the load balancer. And the framework makes uh, several actions. They make authentication call, after that, they put some billing information, and after that, access the resource for the resource API. So you have different action distributed for the different hosts, and the whole communication, the whole steps are traced and have unique your trace ID. The next um, part of uh, the uh, important term is a span. So span is a building block. So basically, unit of work you produce in the different system. For example, client send. Uh, Request using HTTP client, uh, HTTPS client, and uh, it's produced its own span. So it's uh, also identified as, as, as ID. After that, uh, your web framework communicates with uh, authentication as also additional span, so own span. Normally, a span is inside uh, application, one application, and even inside the single thread. So as, as you leave the thread, it's an additional span. With the different types of span could be root one uh, when they start communication. It could be parents, but then one span produces another span, the, the, the child one, and of course the child. As soon as you should propagate information about span, uh, the span context this is a way to propagate this information to another system. So it contains normally it contains at least trace ID and parent span ID. 
could contain also some additional uh, attributes as well. Uh, the span has uh, two kinds of relations. So if the parent span needs uh, a result of the child one, uh, it should wait for that. Uh, the both span has a, a child of relation. Another kind of is that span just uh, make a fire and forget uh, event. So uh, just send some events and don't interest in, in the response at all. Then the uh, relation is follows from. You see it's on this picture, span A, uh, start span C, but uh, depends on them in sense of result. So it's a root span, uh, then C is a child of A, and also produce two childs, E and F, but F uh, make it just a uh, fire and forget event, and then span G, span G is the follow span. It's about uh, relations. And of course, in context, we have some attributes. The most important is, of course, trace ID, because we should identify the whole round trip of the message. Every span has also identifier, and we also send parent uh, span ID that we can see the relationship between the spans. Uh, so on this picture, you can see it, uh, uh, the uh, attributes quite quite clear. So we start communication from this uh, client. Uh, parent span is still null, but there is already trace ID, span A. When A produces span B, the trace ID is constant for the whole communication. And span B has a parent span A, the same for span C that they have a sp uh, parent span B, and uh, span E also has directly parent span A. This is the idea of identification of span and correlation of the spans. Uh, let's look on the Zipkin, open Zipkin. Um, what is the functionality and what kind of um, advantages this service provides? This is an open source solution that uh, helps a uh, distributed system to check uh, tracing information. The first part is, of course, uh, that your uh, application should be instrumented because we need to at least insert some headers in your clients and servers. And also, additionally, you can report, should report asynchronously and be able to report asynchronously information to the uh, uh, central, central server. This is the first part. And normally, instrumenting of the code libraries is uh, available to the numerous different languages. For Java is, for example, Brave. Um, then second task of the SL instrumentation, uh, reporting of spam asynchronously. Uh, so there is a kind of reporter. This so use uh, transport. It could be different transport. And it report this information to the central uh, tracing server. Uh, the next step is a collection of tracing data in correlation. So there's a number of different requests. You should somehow correlate it based on the trace ID. And of course, store the tracing data. After that, it makes sense, of course, that the customer could uh, look up using IPI or web GUI or this tracing data. And uh, Zipkin is used uh, as a base for a lot of solutions. For example, Apache 6 has integration with Zipkin, uh, Spring uh, uh, Cloud Slois is used in Spring Boot, as a JS and REST Easy has some integration. So the architecture of Zipkin is shown in this picture. As I said, there is an instrumented, instrumented client, instrumented server. So this library running on the client side and the server side, and be able to inject headers for the communications on the uh, trace is propagated here. And um, reporter, reporter could use a different transport. By default, it's HTTP, yes, and could use also Kafka and RabbitMQ as asynchronous communication. Uh, on the server side of Zipkin, there is a collector that's basically make a correlation between the different single entities and stored in the database. It could be by default is Cassandra, but it could be MySQL, a stack driver in the Google Cloud Platform or Elasticsearch. And also Zipkin server provides the API, REST API to access this information programmatically, or you can also do it using user interface. This is the idea of the Zipkin server. Uh, we also look, could look uh, could see the communication on this uh, example. There is a user code. It makes a get REST request. It's intercepted by uh, instrumentation and records the, the text uh, at the headers. And uh, this um, request is instrumented at least with two attributes, the trace ID and the span ID. 
and are sent to the HTTP uh, transport. And on the server side, after that, uh, you receive uh, some response, uh, record the duration information, and uh, the span will be reported, uh, the span will be record, reported asynchronously in the Zipkin server, inclusive duration, uh, name of operation, and of course, the attributes trace ID in span. Yeah, so how uh, Zipkin uh, works now. Uh, yeah, additionally, there is also open tracing API. So if you don't like to be dependent on single vendor, for example, Opkin, Zipkin, or, or, or Brave, and would like to be more or less independent, you can use this open tracing API that's implemented available in the number of languages. And you see also the known objects like a tracer, span, and span context. And the Brave also provide a facade for open tracing API. So you have a choice. You either could use directly Brave API or can use more generic open tracing uh, standard. Um, Apache TXF basically provides a both solution. So let's look uh, into the um, integration of tracing into Apache TXF. There is a, on the left side is a client uh, using the TXF JAX RS uh, implementation, and on the right side is a service. Um, what is necessary to do is uh, uh, you can inject uh, trace, tracer context to have access to actual trace information to the thread. Also necessary for the client to add uh, JAX RS providers as a brave client provider or uh, one of them or open tracing client provider is either you decide to use Brave uh, API directly or you use open tracing one. Uh, after that, the, your client is instrumented and uh, all calls and success calls will include additional headers with a trace ID, span ID, parent span ID. A sampled flag uh, says either you, uh, uh, the information should be locked or should be sent uh, in the Zipkin server directly or not and some additional flags could be propagated as well. On the server side is basically very similar. You can also inject the tracing context and you need to provide uh, to add a uh, server side uh, JAX RS providers, a brave provider or open tracing probe. So if it looks in the source code uh, for the client, uh, yeah, need to write a bit, a bit code here. So create a transport, sender for the transport. is a HTTP transport, but uh, also uh, ActiveMQ and uh, Kafka transport available. They create a kind of tracing objects with some configuration at the name of the service, uh, configure a transport, send a transport, say a sampler. In this case, is always so all log entries will be reported to the uh, Zipkin. And after they create a brave uh, provide client provider, what I show, and uh, register with this kind of information. And after that, you use client just as it is with like a DOCSR standard, send your request. Uh, receives the responses and uh, the whole information will be injected and reported automatically. Uh, on the server side, it's very similar. Uh, configure a transport as well, create a test object, and uh, use a brave feature to uh, add this information into the uh, application, server application. Uh, so let, next, let's, let's see, it's now uh, on the demo. I just should share my another screen. Give me minutes. I will try to share the whole screen to do it. So here is uh, the scenario. Yeah, I will show shortly the scenario as well. Yeah, so scenario is quite simple in this case. We have, uh, oh, sorry, so, yeah. uh, scenario, scenario is quite, quite, quite simple. Um, we have from one side, I'll just show it in the here. Yeah, this one. So we have a client and the server. Uh, DAX RS client, DAX RS server. Uh, what the client 
you can just send two requests to create a catalog uh, and to get the catalog back. And you will say it's configured, it's configured the Brave client provider with HTTP tracing. From the server side, uh, makes uh, provides the two operations, uh, get books and uh, add book. Makes it asynchronously. Yeah, so uh, the, the executor that submit request and creates basically another thread. Therefore, we will see not only single span here, we, have, we will see multiples, multiple spans. Uh, and basically, it's a create uh, catalog book and then provides the uh, result uh, of the search. Um, let's let make it run. So I start my server. And start my client. So just the client will report, um, create a catalog and report that it's read it on the test book. But now interesting what we will see in the Zipkin server. So to find it, yeah, here is it. So it's a two communication. So the first one is a post with, uh, which creates a, create a book. So I, I, as I say, there are two spans on the server side. One is called the post operation uh, with um, span ID. And the second one is uh, in setting new book. You see also which, how, how much time it takes. So post takes a bit more time because it's uh, initialization of the server and the first just first request. And inside, inside book is quite, quite quick. Uh, and the second is a get operation is also two spans it just call the get methods and looking of the looking of looking of the book as a separate thread so we have a client span and we have a two server spans here of course we have a trace id trace id is constant for the whole communication and we will able in this case to see which part of the system are involved uh, which is the spans and how long the operation takes um, let's look uh, into the uh, Spring Boot integration. Uh, Spring Boot to integrate the Open Zip in the Spring Boot is even more easy as a budget XF. You shouldn't basically write code at all because it has nice instrumentation uh, solution slots. It's also based on the Brave uh, library. Basically, you can also insert the tracer using auto white annotation to get the current trace information. And after that, uh, basically, you need only to configure two starters, um, open uh, slice starter and uh, Zipkin starter in your uh, build file as dependency. And then your application will be automatically injected. Only important that uh, uh, um, uh, you need to inject uh, client your HTTP clients uh, REST templates not created with a new uh, with a new of course uh, that the instrumentation will 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 won't work. But if the, uh, you use uh, Spring Boot um, beans injection, then it works out of the box, and you will see the communication headers, additional communication headers, and the stuff will be reported to the server. Uh, yeah, exactly. So what you need to configure is the two starters in your POM uh, is a slow starter and a Zipkin starter. That's all that basically you need to proactively do if you have a standard ports and standard configuration and inject, of course, inject your clients. Um, this is a server side. So you uh, inject client. You can also not necessarily, but you can inject a tracer and get some information about span with a parent ID, trace ID, and span ID. Or if you can, you like to propagate it in some uh, system that is not automatically instrumented, you can also use this information as well. Or you can report it into the log file, for example. Um, the scenario is a bit more complicated for uh, uh, Spring Boot. Uh, it is 
Also we have uh, two services here, so two uh, microservices, let's say. One is composite, uh, have injected REST client. And uh, we have a basic service that have also synchronous communication. And the second method I have uh, additionally it's published stuff into the Kafka, Kafka topic and list. So I have synchronous plus some asynchronous communication. Uh, and the all uh, information for the whole round trips will be reported to Zipkin server in this case. So let's let's look how it works. So I need to switch to my idea now. So let's look a bit in the code, how it's implemented. Um, so from the composite service, we have a simple composite controller with injected uh, basic client. And we just can be able to get this information here and uh, by hello, just invoke uh, the basic client, invoke basic, and by send, invoke send topic operation. So two kind of operations, both a get. Uh, Basic client is a REST template, has a REST template builder and just invokes operation. Interesting that's also protected using Histrix command. So Histrix is a kind of uh, resilient uh, library to protect your uh, endpoints or this circuit breaker. So if a endpoint not responds, you can either reject it immediately with a error or so after some uh, uh, threshold requests, uh, if request uh, increase, uh, failed request incre increase some threshold, you can either report immediately the error or make use some fallback. But it also create your own thread pool for the request to turn to, to pollute the whole system and block the whole system. On the server side, uh, and yeah, as I, as I said, uh, in the POM, you just need these two additional dependencies. You need uh, Slois and uh, Zipkin to make the things done. So it's really, all things are integrated out of the box here. And the same on the uh, basic client, you need two additional dependencies, uh, Slois and Zipkin. Uh, here in the controller, there's two operations. The boss just responds with a uh, uh, thing, and a second make additionally communication with the Kafka. So send something in the Kafka topic, and there is a listener, so receiver who uh, uh, listen to this topic and just publish the information. So let's let's make it run. I will start. Composite service first. And basic service. So, basic service, you will see some. Communication with uh, Kafka. This uh, should connect to my Kafka server. The Kafka is already started here. Yeah, it's connected. Perfect. So, and with the terminal, I will invoke first hello operation. It's quite similar, uh, simple. So, I just will receive the so from basic service, the synchronous communication. Let's look what happens on the Zipkin side. I have no communication. Don't understand why. Ah, no. Okay. It takes some time because it's asynchronous communication with uh, uh, Zipkin service and it appears this small delay. Uh, but therefore, our uh, influence on the publication performance is less. So uh, let's see, we have uh, one span in the basic service here and three spans on the composite service. Uh, so composite service has a get operation called and after that, it's interesting you see a histrix. So a histrix create a new thread. Therefore, 
this is it is a new span here it's a parent span id of get uh, therefore if it removes the histic annotation and just makes synchronous communication we'll see only only one span and after that the call goes to the uh, basic service and invokes hello and it just return a uh, response to you and back this is a uh, First kind of communication is quite simple, it's only histrix is, is interesting here. Um, let's try to do a second kind of communication with a send. So basically the result is the same. We have a thing from the basic service, but additionally in this case, basic service, com basic service make a communication, uh, produce a communication with a Kafka. And we'll see it, so let's sort our communications here we see the additional spans with a kafka and now yeah, it's a bit more interesting as a composite composite service uh, stays the same as so, a you know, make a get uh, call a get operation and roll the histrix but for basic service now happens a bit more makes a call a get operation and then additionally it sends uh, asynchronously uh, the uh, information to kafka then you see a pool uh, threads, that's a, the pools uh, Kafka topic. And after that, the on message method will, will be called. So you'll see the whole communication inclusive in asynchronous one on the uh, server side. So that's about demos. Let's return back to the presentation. Uh, what I would like to additionally um, show um, the solution we implemented for one e-commerce uh, provider is this real um, e-commerce scenario architect, how, uh, how the tracing is organized there. Uh, so architecture is uh, a standard one with microservices. So it's a uh, front-end Java, uh, JavaScript-based front-end called from the uh, web browser. Uh, the front end communicates with back end using public API, REST public API. Um, it's not only front ends communicating, also external consumers and mobile applications. And here there is a component uh, microservices implementing Facade. It's necessary because there are two kinds of business here is a core uh, services that's responsible to uh, provide um, products from uh, e commerce provider itself and sell it. And there's a market, market marketplace uh, services that's responsible to uh, deal with the products from other sellers or so just use a platform to sell own products. So for the customer, for the end customer, basically it's transparent. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's at, uh, so he's at uh, in the shopping cart, uh, some products from the e provider or marketplace, it just uh, see it together and pays together. Uh, the core business service marketplace additionally communicates with uh, SAP uh, for uh, bulgarian inf information. Uh, also has a document-based MongoDB database, SQL-based uh, Postgres, and use ActiveMQ as a messaging search. Additionally, core business service communicates with online finance system and credit forcing check system. So you see the communication is for quite complicated and tracing solution is absolutely must here. So as we look uh, how uh, tracing solution is implemented, there are two kind of identifiers. The first the web browser has a kind of session ID. It is sent with uh, all requests and we propagate for the whole system. Session ID is stored about some days uh, in the in browser and we can, uh, based on the session ID, we can reproduce the whole uh, communication. So which kind of communication, including front end a customer made. Additionally, facade create a marketplace ID is kind of trace ID to propagate uh, in our core business services marketplace and backend systems. And we can uh, restore basically based on the marketplace um, all communication uh, for all chain, call chain from the uh, front end. Uh, if you look on the uh, deployment, uh, the whole uh, microservices are hosted in the Google Cloud platform. Uh, and facade a marketplace service implemented using Spring Boot uh, and core business services using Caraf in the ZXF, so deployed in Caraf and using ZXF for communication. But nice in the tracing solution, you can use as a different technologies. So 
it doesn't matter which technology you use as far as the propagated using HTTP headers. Uh, the CXF implementation uh, works perfectly with the Spring Boot implementation. It absolutely doesn't matter. And we uh, just uh, write uh, write this additional tracing information in the blog files using flowing bit to parse uh, the stuff and send to central Grelock Elasticsearch solution. And this really nice, uh, what, what, what I benefit. So if every year is uh, reported or system has a slowdown, I ask just a customer to provide a session ID. And based on the session ID, I see all communication between the browser and front end system. And if I uh, get the marketplace ID, I can uh, see the whole traces inside the single front of facade invocation. So just demonstrate how it looks like in real life. I need to start additional browser for that. It's a pre-production system. It takes today some time to loading. Now just look for a other request. I have some of them. And uh, here see in the headers is a uh, session ID identifier. It's uh, from browser. And additionally, it's a marketplace uh, ID that's propagated as a trace ID. And if I enter this information in the gray log, I see the whole communication. Make it a bit bigger. So this is an inbound message, my request to the facade. After that, I have a communication with core business services. It's already CXF login. So there's a request to come. I see some processing uh, uh, in the core logic and then a result. So it takes a certain milliseconds and produce a result. After that, um, uh, it asks for, uh, okay, it says additional communication with uh, card service because card should be recalculated in this case. Um, after that, I see also, I see the response from that uh, execution time. And here's a communication with marketplace service implemented with Splinbook. This is inbound request and uh, response. And uh, at the end, I see the response from the facade and execution inside the facade. It's really useful. So I see all parts of the systems uh, and can analyze either slowdowns or errors. Or, and I see uh, which part of my distributed system the request has arrived. And it's quite important. So without this uh, kind of tracing, the, the maintenance of the system was, was impossible. Okay, uh, conclusions. So first, uh, tracing correlation with single -like entities are really essential to distributed systems. So if you make build your distributed system, it's a must. So you should really think about kind of tracing because without it, uh, if the system is uh, even not complicated, so have some only some hosts is still uh, a huge issue without tracing solution to analyze it. Um, Zipkin and Opkin Tracing provide quite nice open source solutions for that. And you have, uh, you can benefit of uh, um, out of the box uh, integration uh, with uh, Apache Carraf, CXF, Camel, Spring Boot. So it's already integrated. So you should either write very small amount of code, or for example, for Spring Boot, you shouldn't write code at all, just add some dependencies, and you, hear, you, you see a working solution with that. Of course, you can customize that, introduce your own IDs to the tracing, but important that uh, you be able to trace your round trips of the messages, analyze the failure, errors, 
and analyze the system flow downs using the tracing solution. Yeah, that's basically all from uh, my side. Perhaps you have some questions. No, oh, I have some. One of from the Maurice uh, exception should always propagate uh, uh, bubble up to the caller. So to me, the caller process is responsible for log, not the service. Basically, the, all the both uh, sides are important because um, if exception or slowdown happens on the uh, server side, you also need to know uh, on the uh, deeper level what really happens. Uh, so of course, yeah, you log some information and uh, uh, exception to the client, but uh, in some times, for example, you can proceed some exception situation on the server side, and therefore uh, uh, client will have some success with info or just normal response, but it's still something happens, uh, something bad happens, uh, uh, on the uh, server side, and you would like to see this as log as well. So basically, the both kind of logging is important on the server side and, and the client side. And for me, it's very really important to understand on, based on the log how message round trips looks like, yeah, which part of the system message arrive, and what happens uh, in the, every part of the system. You should have clear build to analyze it. Um, next question. Are there books that allow to gather tracing info in C and C++ code and on HTTP tracing? Hmm. Uh, I think so, yes. But to be honest, I cannot, uh, I have, mm, I, I, I worked with C++ frameworks uh, 15 years ago. And to be honest, I don't know the actual state. But I definitely, there are some integration solution uh, so with C++ and .NET. Um, next question, does it not generate logical communication? That's very, really good, uh, really good point. Um, yes, it could generate a lot of communication to the, uh, uh, your tracing server, but um, the first uh, point that you can decide either you need it at all or it's enough just to write log information. So you can say, for example, as I, as I demonstrate the e-commerce solution, we don't communicate proactively this stuff to the uh, Zipkin server or the tracing server, we just write in the logs and logging system Elasticsearch responsible to correlate this. Uh, the second, uh, this communication uh, happens asynchronously, so basically it's not uh, directly slow down your system. So uh, you have asynchronous communication and your System just works uh, through there. You don't block the, the thread. Uh, the communication with the uh, tracing server is out of bound. And you also can um, control using sample flex uh, which exactly this. Perhaps you don't interesting to lock uh, all this or to send all the things, uh, all the traces, uh, but only some important stuff should be traced. You can also can fine grain control this communication. So, is it like I said, a down or like unavailable? You will see traces for this request too. Uh, if microservices completely down, uh, you of course don't see the uh, traces inside this microservice, but you will see traces of the of the clients. Call you see either timeout, or if uh, my in my example, it's protected using Histrix. Uh, uh, circuit breaker, you will see some errors from circuit breaker. And you also immediately can see, okay, my client or two or three clients for the same service reported uh, slowdowns or timeouts. So perhaps something happens with my microservices also. Quite good to uh, see, uh, to see uh, uh, what part of system is responsible for fault. If they are overload protection, the many traces might bring down a system in a general high load situation. Uh, yes, so as basically it's uh, very similar to the question uh, regarding producing a lot of communication. Basically, the uh, protection of uh, load uh, with request is not a task of the tracing system. Yeah? So you, you tracing just reflect. So if you have overload of the requests, your system suffers, you should protect it using spike arrest, for example, in your gateway, 
or uh, a kind of uh, throttling uh, solution. Yeah. Uh, basically, the uh, tracing should should produce as less uh, overhead as possible, and you can control uh, this kind of communication with a sampling flex, or you can refuse completely to a, a communication with the tracing server. And really, good idea to do it asynchronously to don't uh, block your working threads with that. But it's still, of course, if have, if you have a high load, uh, it could be possible that a lot of communication works through the, your tracing server in the system, and then you should tune this. Perhaps you don't need the whole of the, of the trace information or the sum of that, or uh, it's enough to write information in the log and look it in the elastic set after that. So it's basically up to you to decide how important your tracing information is. And uh, uh, the Open Zipkin server and integrations will provide a mechanism to control to find fine grained configures. Okay, so I guess uh, I'm already uh, out of time. Ah, is it possible to read log entities from uh, AWS CloudWatch? Uh, you mean read logs uh, using uh, what, 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 what do you mean with red locks? Uh, so AWS has a uh, own mechanism to uh, search on that. So what you can do, of course, you can uh, add this tracing information to the log and try it into the cloud watch. So for example, we I have not so much experience with uh, Amazon Web Services, but uh, we use a Google uh, Stack Driver for that. Or so just write the information with a trace in Google Stack Driver and we make a Elastic set through the whole logs, and you see this kind of trace information. Yes, of course, so, uh, it's a good idea to integrate if you use a cloud provider to uh, integrate their own login solution. And most of client provider also has uh, some of the uh, cloud providers use uh, uh, has a tracing uh, integration. So you can just uh, configure your uh, library with com to communicate with. Uh, uh, Tracing solution from your cloud provider. It's not necessary to has uh, to host Open Zipkin server separately. Not sure that I exactly answer your question, but <laughs> okay, good. So, any any more questions? If not, I would say. Thanks a lot. I will attend the conference for all three days. If you have some more questions or issues, or you would like to integrate tracing solution in your own system, uh, just ping me. I will answer that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And have a nice conference day. Bye bye.